How you going? Welcome to Throwback Thursday. This tin hut here that I'm in is one that Mushroom and Young Sea Dog both built on one of our boys' boot camps. This is the bed where Sea Dog lay. And if I pan around, you can see she's uh, she's not flash. Pretty bare bones basic. I made out of slab wood. And I just made a coffee. Coffee going there as the chimney comes out of the ground. And one day, I hope to own this piece of land where this is built. One day I hope to have my own log cabin here. Probably build it a bit further that way so it gets more sun. But this is where I'm going to tell you the story of where I got the taste for whiskey. So for that story, we've got to go back in time. We're going to travel up to the North Island, right up to Ahipara, Shipwreck Bay. So sit back and I'll tell you the yarn. So this yarn, I want to tell you, goes back to when I was 18 years of age. I was a young man working around doing seasonal work, picking apples and I'd just fallen in love with this girl called Diane. She lived at Hilltop Orchard not far from where I lived. Diane was just beautiful. She was blonde and blue eyes. And I thought she was beautiful. And her father and her mother were good to me. I used to go around to their home and eat fish every Tuesday. And it was like a little family for me, like having a family again after being away from home so long. And I eventually bought an Austin J4 van with Diane. I'm just going to tilt the camera a little bit while I'm talking to it because I feel like I'm a bit low. And this Austin J4 van, we we kitted it out so we could live in it. It was bloody amazing. You know, it had a, a bed, a cooking area, place for storing food, place for all the fishing rods, place for my rifle. And we wanted to go on a big adventure. And my thinking was we'll go to the North Island because we'd never really been there before. We're from the South Island here in New Zealand. So off we headed. Now I had this book which had, which had all the best surfing places in New Zealand you could go. It was amazing, you know, it would show you all the places. And I always figure, well, I'm going to go up North Island, my surfboard, and I'm going to surf every bay. And I just about did too. It was like east coast to the west coast, back and forward, and some amazing breaks. Eventually we, arri we arrived at Shipwreck Bay, which was in a township not far from Kaitaia, a little township called Ahipara. And that's when all the adventure really began. I hadn't met many Māori people, Māori being the native people in New Zealand. Also some say maybe the Moriori came here first and there's even now new history that maybe someone came before them. But then our thinking was that Māori were the very first people there in New Zealand or the native people. And I hadn't really met them because I was from down south where there wasn't very many Māori there and so I got to meet the local Māori and I didn't know anything about their culture much other than what I learned at school and most of that was crap and wrong. Most of my pronunciation of their words was wrong because they taught us wrong at school. So I, I relearnt quite a bit while I was there but the real thing I learned is they are the true bushmen of New Zealand. They're the ones that got so many awesome techniques for fishing particularly and also hunting and I learned a lot. So I met this guy called Manu. Now, the way I met Manu was I was camped at Shipwreck Bay with my girlfriend Diane and my surfboard on the roof. And one morning I woke up to put my shoes on and they were gone. And I thought, oh, I've lost them. Uh, but unbeknown to me, Manu had seen them and decided he'd have them. So to my thinking, this was stealing, but to Manu's thinking was uh, I wasn't using them so he could use them. So I was down on the point trying to catch some fish for breakfast unsuccessfully, because that's what we lived off was fish mostly. And uh, there was Manu on the rocks with uh, my blue shoes on that I had. Why were they blue? Well, I'd done a painting job earlier for a guy and I got paint all over them a little bit, a bit of blue paint, so I figured, oh well, I'll do the whole lot and I, I made them blue, so I've very distinct coloured off my shoes. <laughs> Not actually, we're well, looking back, they must look fucking horrible, but that's what they were. And Manu had them on his feet. And I said to him, uh, Manu, you've got my shoes on. And he's like, uh, yeah. And I said, well, they're mine. He goes, I needed them. And I said, uh, okay. So for the rest of the day, I wore bare feet and Manu wore my shoes. And he taught me how to catch fish later that, that day using a, uh, it was like a, one of those, the common now, back then I don't know about them, a fish trap, you know, like a, sort of like an enucky, but one for herrings. So we caught some smaller fish. And the idea was to try and catch some John Dory as a live bait, which we didn't catch, but that was a, the theory. And uh, that evening he took me out 
and we went fishing for eel and I remember we caught so many eel and we smoked them and the way that we took the uh, slime off their body was we chopped their heads off, they were dead, and we put them into a pot of boiling water and they swam around without their heads but they were dead and then the skin just scraped off and it was really white and it was really good. I became good friends with Manu and we went hunting and fishing together and I learned a lot about his culture and one thing that was very apparent which I had never met before was these people were the most generous people but they also took your stuff without asking and they didn't consider it as stealing. So many mornings I woke up there was fish outside my door, wild pork, meat, uh, kinna, you name it. These, these guys gave more than they ever took but they also took, one morning I went up to go fishing and my rod was gone and my gear was gone. And I went around to Marnie's place and he goes, oh, I don't know. And so I believed him and it was his cousin had taken it. And that evening his cousin came back with two fish for me and I got my fishing rod back. Now that's the way it rolled around there. Everybody shared everything and also nobody's parents were necessarily their true parents. A lot of the young kids that were riding the, the beach uh, on their horses, they were like living with their aunties and their uncles. And I'd say, where's your dad? Oh, dad's uh, down south or dad's... Uh, in prison or dad's at sea or dad's dead and a lot of them were really well balanced young kids having awesome lives but they didn't have their original parents but it didn't really matter because the whole village was raising them so I had a, this chainsaw this whole steel chainsaw and I was doing a lot of work for a farmer that's how I was getting the most of the money I was using to buy petrol and supplies and other than that I was living off the land from shellfish and from fish I caught and pigs I caught I went pig hunting with some guys that had two really, really useless dogs and we almost used to have to carry the dogs to the pig, but we did catch some pork. I can't remember the actual facts clearly, I'm, I'm sort of stretching back my imagination a bit, but I do think we once got a pig over 100 pounds, can't really remember. Anyway, but it's that long ago and I did smoke a fair amount of electric broccoli back in those days, which I regret, which destroyed a lot of my memory, but I'm pretty sure I got some gnarly waves there. But one thing I clearly remember was this bus that was on the side of the hill. And I'd always walk past it, there was an elderly man, and when I say elderly, he was probably in his 70s. And sometimes I'd see him swimming in the sea in the morning, and he'd go back up very slowly walking up this bus. And I used to wonder, how the hell did that bus get in the bloody hill? How did it get up so high? It was amazing. I mean, how, did they get a crane in, or did they drive it up there? There was hardly a road, there were some rocks you could go on, but it was sort of like a, a seventh one of the world. This bus stuck up on the mountainside. I wanted to go and see this guy. And one day my curiosity got the better of me. I made my way up the path in the morning. I'd been fishing. I had one fish and I figured it was a good idea to turn up to his place for something. So I had one kahawai and I was going up to his path. And he was completely bloody naked in this big bathtub outside bathing himself. And I was like, oh, I don't want to look at that. So I just pretended I wasn't there went backwards. And he said to me, come up. So I came up and he stood up right in front of me and that was a horrible sight for a young guy, you know, like I hadn't really ever seen a naked man like that before in front and I was like, oh yeah, g'day, here you go. And he said, uh, you got fish? And I said, I have. And he said, oh, well you bought it to the right place. And I said, okay, oh, I bought it for you. And he says, good. He says, I want you to bring me fish as much as you can. And I said, why is that? And he said, because I can't catch them anymore. It's too far to go to the far furthest point where they are and you can't catch them down there because the breakers are too big. That was our first conversation. So I gave him the fish, and he said, you can go now. And I wanted to look at his, his bus, and I said, should I bring you more fish? He said, absolutely. So the next day, I went fishing again for me and my girlfriend, and that night I went home with no fish for her either. She was not happy about that. Next day in the morning, I caught another kahawai, and I thought, hmm, do I want to take this home and cook it up for breakfast, or should I see the old guy? And I thought, hmm. I want to see. I want to see inside his house bus. Went up there the next morning, and there he was. He just got out of his bloody. He, the thing is, he'd had this bath. He washed them, but then he put the most fucking grubby clothes on. He had this singlet that was atrocious. This morning, I came up with another fish, and he took it off me straight away. And he stuck it in a flax bag, and he shook his hand. And he said, "I'm Bill." And I said, "I'm pleased to meet you, Bill." And I told him about myself a little bit, but he wasn't really interested in me. And uh, he said, "Come inside, and we'll drink." I thought, that sounds like an interesting idea. 
I said, what are we going to drink? And he had these plastic cups, the ones that he's collected from the airport. Well, actually, not the airport, the plane he was flying on, he told me. He said, look at all these cups I've got. He's got like 20 of them, just plastic throwaway cups. So back then it was a commodity. And all of them are just disgustingly dirty. They're not clean. You know, they've got like coffee stains and tea stains. And he gets the least most dirty one out of all of them, which is still like you wouldn't want to drink out of it. And his hands are clean because he's had a bath. And he goes, I'll clean it for you, hold on. And he gets his grubby singlet and stuffs his thumb inside and cleans the inside of it so it sort of looks half clean. Puts it on the bench and says, we're drinking whiskey. And I really didn't know much about drinking whiskey at that stage. He popped the cork of this bottle and I never smelt anything like it. He said, I make this out of potato peelings myself. I get potato peelings, left over potato, and I ferment it. And I said, okay. He said, yeah, it's good stuff. It's rocket fuel. So he gave me a wee taste, and I tasted it. I didn't swallow that though, I was like, that's fucking disgusting, man. That tastes like turps. Tastes like a mixture of kerosene, turps, and petrol. It's horrible. My mouth was burning, and he goes, no, no, you've got to drink it. I said, I can't, it's horrible. And he says, okay, I've got another whiskey that you might like. I said, what's that? He goes, it's made out of kumara peelings. And I said, that sounds a little bit better than potato peelings. So, had another sip of the uh, new one, pours it out into my cup again. Oh, and he drinks all the stuff out of my cup himself. Well, he doesn't tip it out, he drinks it, skulls it, and then I'm drinking out of the, the cup with the Kumara peeling whiskey. That was better. That was almost slightly sweet and didn't taste anywhere near as bad as that ranks in potato. I could get it down me, and um, I drank quite a bit. And he started telling me stories of his life, and most of them were pretty amazing really, he'd uh, lived a different colourful life, but the whiskey started to hit me, and my ears started to buzz and glow, and I could feel myself almost floaty, and it was almost like a drug, and I was like getting really off of this whiskey, and I thought, this is bloody good. And I realised I was supposed to be bringing fish back to Diane, who was waiting in the van for, for breakfast or lunch, and I had nothing, and I had to go fishing still, and I was getting intoxicated, and I said to him, uh, Bill, I've, I've got to go now, and he said, okay. And I said, I'll bring you more fish. And he said to me, if you ever catch a John Dory, then I'll give you my yam whiskey. I said, what's yam whiskey? He goes, it's the best whiskey you've ever had in your entire life. And I said, is there a little bit I can try at first? And he goes, no, you have to bring me a John Dory. And I've been trying to catch John Dory, and Manu, who had given me the, the, the fish trap to catch the small one, he just caught one the day before that. So. I was hopeful I could catch one, because he had a place where they were hanging around by the rocks. So, when I got back to camp, and I also got back without catching a fish, I said to Diane, you know, we're going to have to eat some of our tin food because I've got no fresh fish, so we cooked it up. And then I hooked up with Manu that afternoon, and we caught some live bait, and we went back down to Blue, Blue, Blue Rock, Blue, Blue House. So you guys at Surf will know where Blue House is, uh, if you surf up in Shipwreck Bay. So we were at a Blue House, and it was a perfect break coming in, a really good one, but there was a, a sort of a place by the rocks where it was a natural sort of pull, and the tide was right, and we hit our live bait, we caught our live bait around the corner, and we come around here and we, we baited up, and I put my line, and as soon as I put my line straight away, there was this fucking massive John Dory that just popped out like a magic out of nowhere, and it just went straight for the bait, and John Dory, when you catch them, they're a real sluggish fish, they've got quite a soft mouth, and I stuffed it up, and I pulled it out of his mouth, I ripped it out, and I lost it. It was like, oh, you're joking me. Well, we fished there till almost dark before Manu caught a John Dory, another one. And I talked him into giving it to me. And so I got that John Dory and I took it home. It was, it was too late to drop in and see Bill at the house truck. But the next morning, I went back to the house truck, or the house bus at least, and he was there and he just got out of his bath and I had this beautiful John Dory and it was just magic and his eyes just popped out of his head and he goes, oh, I haven't had a John Dory for so long and I said, let's eat it and he goes, let's drink and I said, yeah so he came out with the the bottle and what he had the bottle, and he actually had it in a bottle of, of an old Rambui bottle and he put it into that but it was actually the yam whiskey and this time we didn't get the airport cups, plastic cups this time we got two glass nice little whiskey glasses like that he had which were, in the scheme of things at his place, were actually reasonably clean. And he poured one for me and one for him. And we sat back with our whiskey. And I was like smelling it. Mm. Just sort of 
getting the uh, you know the, the, the flavour and it, it almost is like a liqueur and then I drank it and holy cow it was just unbelievable it was like he created something I don't know how he'd done it with his distill and all that he had a distill with copper pipe and all that shit but he created something that was just fantastic sensational the most I don't know, the, my memory is still there when I think back to how it tasted. And that was the moment I was sold on whiskey. This, I guess you could say it was a single malt, I don't know, single potato, single yam, whiskey, I don't know what you call it. But it was just fucking sensational when I drank that there, and it didn't burn me, and it was smooth as, and man, from that day onwards I've always loved whiskey, eh? I don't drink a lot these days, I save it for a special occasion, if I catch a good boar, or knock over a deer, or something really good happens, I'll have one. But I, I go easy on it, because I like to look after myself. But anyway, so, we drink, and then he goes, now we eat. So, he filled it the John Dory, did a crap job, well, I want to say crap job. I mean, there was bones and stuff in it, and he had this half a litre, sorry, a 60 litre, half a 60 litre drum on stand, with a fire underneath, and a big piece of rusty old cast iron on the top, that looked horrible, and... He stuck his grubby hands into this rancid butter that he had. I remember putting his paws in there and smearing it on top of the hot plate and just sticking the two bits of John Dory and it didn't smell that great. But then he had this garlic that he had hanging up and he chopped that up and smashed it in the butter and as soon as he did that, the whole smell of it came up. And he didn't have any teeth or bugger all teeth. And I can remember his, his face, the first bit he picked up and he was like chewing on it and showing his, his gums. But the flavour of it, and the smell of it was incredible. It was like my first time ever actually eating John Dory fish. I'd never eaten it before because we don't have so many in the South Island. And so we ate the John Dory and we, we scoffed that down and we sucked more on whiskey. And I always, from this day, always think back to that old guy and his grubby singlet and his house in the hill and the first taste I had of a really good whiskey which was made out of yams and the first time I ever ate John Dory and it's a great memory for me it's a great story to recount to you guys I was a young man in love with Diane only 18 and the world was our oyster and money wasn't important we had a whole lives ahead of us and we were on an adventure and from Ahipara, Shipwreck Bay we carried on to different places we went up to Tiputaputa Bay and I shot wild turkey and I've got a video about that I hunted and the Māori people up there taught me so much I learnt so much about the bush fantastic memories, good times of a young man so if you're a young man make, make it happen, do some travelling don't get stuck in one thing, don't get stuck in a job you, you know, or a relationship, travel and go find the world and live it I hope you guys enjoyed this throwback Thursday I've really enjoyed telling it to you I'm almost tempted to go inside now and crack a whiskey, but I'll, I'll stick to the black coffee. See you later. Oh yeah, and be good. If you can't be good, you know the story. Be careful.